Hi there everyone, I hope you're doing really well. As Elsa's song goes, let it go, to test their limits and break through. Only by going through many hardships can one discover their true powers and the endless potential that lies within them. So here's our list for the top 10 anime awakenings. Let's get this countdown started. Starting off the list is Amiya Sharu's projection. At number 10, we had the first time Amiya Sharu used his projection abilities. As many Fate fans know, Sharu is not really all that useful as an ally, especially in the Holy Grail War. At the beginning of the show, Sharu was shown to have the ability to strengthen materials with his Trace On. But during the fight between Sharu, Saber and Tosaka against Kazuki Sensei and Kasta, without the additional help from Archer and the after being surprised by Kazuki's fighting abilities, the three were being overpowered. Sharu, being infiltrated by Archer's sword skills and his dual blades following being disarmed, he used his projection ability to create clones of Archer's blades. Now that's jealousy in a whole other level. Coming in next is Asta's demon form. Following the steps of Uzumaki Naruto, Asta was not the genius or gifted guy, but someone who was determined to prove society wrong. To show that with hard work, he can be the Wizard King. Kinda like with Naruto, who was determined to be the Hokage since he was a boy. Anyway, despite not having a single drop of magic in his blood, Asta received his grimoire, which allowed him to join the Magic Knights. As the saying goes, when you've fallen down, the only way left is up. This guy proves just that. Despite people kicking him down time and time again, he keeps rising up and reaching for the top. After a serious battle, Asta broke his arms, which made his teammates go searching for the Queen of Witches, who can help Asta recover. She did heal Asta, but with the condition that he must take down the Eye of Midnight Sun and the people from the Diamond Kingdom that were invading her lair, the Witch's Forest. There, Asta faced off with Ladros, who can absorb magic. With the Queen's help, the demon within Asta was awoken. Unlike most people though, Asta proved that you can fight the demon inside you and not succumb to the darkness. He was able to use such power while still being in control. With this, he was finally on par with Ladros. An epic airborne battle took place, and like a black shooting star, he flew to the sky and battled with Ladros and eventually defeated him. Carnage, let me take from you! Let me devour you! Carnage powers up against Jason, makes it at number 8. It's better to be hurt than hurt others. This was Carnicky Ken's motto in life, which basically sums up why others saw him as a weak guy. Scrawny and pathetic, a guy who was only interested in books and read and read all his life until he saw a pretty girl and he was deceived. This is why people should try living outdoors once in a while, to not get fooled just because a tall, fair, pretty girl who happens to have the same interests as you, walks up to you and was very friendly. Look what happened to Carnicky. The girl tries to eat him and then rushed to the hospital, doctors experimented and he ended up turning into the one-eyed ghoul. But because he was Mr. Softy, it took 12 episodes before he truly became a ghoul and evolved into the badass white-haired Carnicky many people came to love. Turns out he only needed to get his toes cut several times by Jason before realizing that the world is indeed cruel and unfair and nothing like Sesame Street where everything is all cupcakes and rainbows. At 7, Eren uses the power of the Founding Titan. After being abducted by his former buddies at the Survival Training Corps, the others came looking for Eren to rescue him. Of course, there is no way Mikasa would allow Eren to be taken from them. In the midst of their rescue, Mikasa retrieved Eren but they came across a familiar Titan. The same Titan who ate Eren's mother. After seeing that face, there was no way Eren would let it get away from him this time. But due to major exhaustion, Eren's remaining strength can only allow him to regenerate. Despite all his efforts to turn into a titan, he failed. Haynes came to their aid, but unfortunately, he fell into the same fate as Eren's mum. 
Thereafter, witnessing another person he holds dear being devoured by his sworn enemy, Aaron was about to give up, realizing he has not changed one bit. But Mikasa made him see that he has and was someone important to her. This motivated Eren to use the power of the Founding Titan for the first time. He punched the palm of the Titan and with the second punch, Titans began running to the one who ate Eren's loved ones. They devoured the Titan and Eren used this opportunity to run away. Rainer, in his Titan form, and Bertolt ran towards Eren to retrieve him, but Eren again was able to use Coordinate and stop them, then the other Titans attach Rainer. Man, words can definitely hurt you. Luffy conquers Haki comes in next. For a guy made of rubber and basically has a power to stretch, who would have thought his story would go on for this long? Some people would think he's just a pirate made of rubber. What other power can he possibly have? And humans were proven wrong once more. As the series went on, Luffy gained more and more abilities, growing stronger and stronger. One of these abilities was Heo Shoko Haki. Apparently it's a very rare form that one can expect when people talk about the main character. Anyway, it's an ability that exercises one's willpower over others. There were several times Luffy showed this power, and in the earlier times, people were confused about it. The first time was with the bull. Remember that one? But one of the times where it did stand out was during the time he used his hacky to save Margaret, who was turned to stone and is about to get smashed into pieces by an ugly giant snake. So these girls have powers too. Screaming stop while in the grasp of another ugly giant snake, his amazing power reached all the way to the audience observing the match. A large number of them fainted and Margaret was gently released and so was he. His power has similarities to Shrek's roar. I said stop! That's enough! Whoa, let's hope they eat mints before screaming. At five, we have Ichigo Transformation. From a regular high school life into the life of a Shinigami, Ichigo Kurosaki now faces a whole new world filled with souls and hollows, battling every day to secure the safety of his hometown. After becoming a Shinigami and unlocking his Benkai, he faced off with enemies where his newfound power is not enough, so he sought something greater by mastering his hollow powers. Battling with one of Aizen's accomplices, the Arunka Yukiora, his new abilities were still not enough. After doing his best to combat Yukiora, he finds himself utterly defeated and at death's doorstep. His friends Uryu and Oriheim tried to rescue Ichigo, but Yukiora was still too powerful for them. And amidst the chaos and in order to rescue his friends, Ichigo snaps and transforms into a hallow as well. Orega. Orega mamore. He then goes toe to toe and overpowers Yukiora, leading to one of the best fight scenes in anime. It's a dead end, which means you're mine! Get away from me! Red counter! Kirishima Unbreakable Form makes it at number four. New arc rolls around with students from UA have work study. Ain't school grand? Will their never ending programs with the side of actual school work? Anyway, Following the introduction of the Big Three of UA, Kirishima was invited by one of them, Tamaki Amajiki, to the agency where he does his work study. During his first day while on patrol with Amajiki, also known as Sun Eater and the pro hero Mr. Fat, they had to stop some villains and while apprehending them from the crowd, a man shot Sun Eater with a dart that prevented him from using his quirk. This made Kirishima, also known as Red Riot, to chase after the guy on his own. The situation quickly escalated to a battle between the two, and the villain injected himself with a drug that powered up his quirk. Kirishima then had the opportunity to test his new attack that increases the strength of his hardening quirk, but for only a limited amount of time. However, it was just enough to take down the enemy and made people aware of his name. Talk about a spectacular debut. Goku Awakens Ultra Instinct comes in at number three. We've seen him turn red, 
His hair turned yellow, his hair grow longer in a matter of seconds, and turns into a giant ape and back into a half human and half ape. And diving into a new Arc Dragon Ball Super, he assumes the power of a god and mastered a new form, Super Saiyan Blue. Now Goku has to participate in a universal competition where his entire galaxy, or universe, is at stake. On the final round, he then faced another challenge, and we all know how Goku loves a challenge. And as usual, our favorite Saiyan overcomes this by mastering another transformation, Ultra Instinct. But unlike his other transformations, this is not all flashy and not new hair color and body changes. But his senses are way better than before, thus enabling him to beat his foe. And just to show how awesome this new form is, as Lord Beerus and the other Gods of Destruction watch as one of them commented, that is a state not even a god can easily attain. Hearing all that, all I can say is, damn son. At number 2, Tanjiro powers up. With the heartbreaking story of how Kamada Tanjiro's family was brutally devoured by a demon with his younger sister Nezuku being the only survivor, Tanjiro was determined to return Nezuku to being human again after turning into a demon. He was able to join the Demon Slayer corpse in hopes of finding the cure for Nezuku. During one of his most difficult battles yet, he had to face off with Ruai, one of the lower five of the 12 Kazuki. This guy just proves to not judge people by their size. Despite being so tiny, he's actually really strong. So to all the midgets out there, don't feel too bad. Anyway, given the fact that Tanjiro hasn't been a demon slayer for too long and been battling with Rui's family members, he's exhausted and injured, so one can't really blame him for snapping his sword into two. Well, except for Mr. Haganazuka. However, Despite his sword breaking, Tanjiro did not give up and continued to fight Rui to protect her sister. In the midst of battle, a memory from his childhood allowed him to improve his total concentration water breathing, 10th form, constant flux, and unlocking the power he had inside, passed down from his father. With Rui using his blood demon art and creating a blood thread cage, trapping Tanjiro, Tanjiro's life flashed before his eyes, which allowed him to remember what his father told him. Then his water breathing turned into Hinokami dance breathing. The water turned into fire. This scene is such a beautiful portrayal of a brother's love for his sister, wanting to protect her with all his might, even if it means getting hurt himself. The bond between these siblings is seriously real and stronger than anything. Seriously, this guy needs to be awarded the brother of the year. That's true love for you. And finally, at number one, Gon powers up. Finally at number one, who can forget this little kid? Just remembering how he used to fight using a fishing rod and has beaten enemies with it. Yeah, just an ordinary fishing rod. Can you believe that? After surviving Greed Island and traveling with his friend Kilua, they mastered Nen in order to get stronger. One thing then led to another and they are faced with a great crisis. The Hunter Association now gathers in order to beat a new enemy, the Ant King Meruem. And during one of the assaults on the Ant King's bases, Gon and his fellow Hunter face Pito. Due to the huge power gap, Gon and the rest needs to retreat, and Kite, one of Gon's father's old companions, stayed behind in order for his team to be able to retreat. Later on, Gon saw his body and finds out how he died by the hands of Pito. This then got him enraged and vowed revenge on Pito. Finally faced against Pito, he then transforms into a future version of himself using his Nen. By doing this, he gains enormous power, allowing him not only to defeat Pito, but literally overpowering him, leading to his ugly demise. But as we all know, gaining enormous power will always come with a price. As Kalua explained later on, what Gon did was impossible and will cost his life, and it did. But that's another story. So, 
What did you think of our top 10 anime awakenings? Do you think there are other moments that are more deserving to be on this list? Feel free to give your opinions in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button for more similar vides. Until next time, attack us in arms, stay home and stay safe. See ya!